Medieval 2 Total War is a turn-based strategy game and real-time tactics video game, the sequel to 2002's Medieval Total War and the fourth game in the Total War series by Creative Assembly. This was released on the 10th of November 2006 for PC. Now, Medieval 2 Total War is said to be one of those beloved games and the best Total War games from some people's opinion, expanding massively upon its predecessor, in this case, Medieval 1 from back in 2002, with not only updated graphics that had updating mechanics and of course, the whole world map and single player was completely redesigned. And my god, it was an amazing game and it is still played massively by so many people today. But this had some side effects. This meant people wanted more, and Medieval 3 fast became one of the most requested games for Total War and CA in general, but there are many many reasons why this could never happen. Well, here's a thing. I look at our foes and I see nothing but arse weasels. I am a well-read man. A bunch of piss-a-bed, cod-nibbling, rotund, hoof merchants and sheep worrying gits. Now if you're in the Total War game community or pretty much any PC gaming genre you've heard about the Total War series, it started off as something very small with Shogun Total War and is becoming this massive franchise doing partners with Warhammer with three games set to come out with the first, the second already released and the third one coming next year. So it's safe to say that CA have come from something very small and built up this series to be the mainstay of the PC strategy market. But anyone that is in the Total War scene says one thing. When people are asked what they want to see next, it's not really a new era a lot of the time. Most people will say Medieval 3. And I explained that this was because of Medieval 2 being such a massive hit. But CA have already stated in an interview a while ago that they didn't really want there to be three of a series. But that interview was quite a long time ago. Now, why do I not think that Medieval 3 is going to happen in the near future? Well, if they do do Medieval 3, I don't think it really matters how good the game is. Now you may be thinking, what, it, what, what, what are you talking about, bro? Well, think about it. A similar thing happened with Rome 2 Total War. Rome Total War was an extremely beloved game. And when Rome 2 Total War was announced, there was so much hype behind it. This was built over years and years of people wanting this game. And when it finally came out, people were so disappointed. Now, it's granted, Rome 2 was full of bugs, it was a complete disaster upon release, and now it's an extremely good game and I do love going back to it every now and then, not just for the time period, but they've actually really improved in terms of gameplay and they're still bringing out DLCs and things for it at the moment. We're not going into the DLC argument at the moment, that is not what this video is about. But, taking it back to Medieval, the same could happen. Since Medieval 2 was such a big success, any hints or any announcement of Medieval 3 could be the source of its own demise. No matter how good the game is, CA will always be scared for the backlash when it's not quite as good as these far-fetched hopes or rose-tinted spectacles that players expect or never live up to their expectations. Because people love Medieval 2 so much, they will expect Medieval 3 to be incredible, probably even putting it above any other game that's come out in the Total War series, having these extreme hopes for the game that sometimes aren't possible or unlikely to happen within a Total War game. Rose Tinted Spectacles are something that's been a massive problem in the gaming industry for the last few years, especially with a lot of remakes happening. People remember their old nostalgic days of games that they played as a kid, absolutely loving them at the time and then when people remake these games or make sequels for the games in the modern day using all the new technology they're always disappointed because they don't actually remember the game before they remember the experiences and memories and these experiences and memories while they're still in your head now they're a time captured from when you were a kid for many reasons, there's games that I really don't want to go back to, like the original Star Wars Battlefront 2. If I went back to that now, I don't think I'd have the same experience as I did back in the day. That used to be my favourite game ever made, on the PS2, playing it with my friends in split screen. But if I went back to that game now, as an adult, I don't think that's going to have any of the same effects it used to, and it will completely ruin my nostalgia for that game. And that could be a similar thing. It will probably be a letdown to people, no matter how good they actually make it, because there will always be things that people expect that aren't necessarily possible. 
Now, most people did do the same with Rome 2. They said this is going to be the best Total War ever. And like I said, there were mistakes and there was a lot of problems. But it wouldn't have been nearly as far if people didn't have such high expectations for that game. Times have changed. And so has Total War as a series itself. And of course, CA as a company itself. They have different things that they need to adhere to now. Before, CA could put up a game in any time area they wished. As it was sort of starting out and they were trying to introduce people, bringing as many people, having different time areas to bring different fans from these areas into their game. But now, they're such a big company. They have a lot of things to worry about. They have contracts, partnerships, and of course, a massive AAA company to keep afloat. So risks and taking risks are less likely. And that brings up the discussion, will Medieval 3 be a risk though? That links a lot back to the rose-tinted spectacles. It could be a risk for old OG fans, but at the same time, Medieval 3 is one of the most requested Total War games, so I do think it would sell well. But whether they'll be able to withstand the backlash, unless they do get that game perfect, is something that they do need to be watching out for. Now, of course, being this massive AAA company, they've got a lot to do. Working on Warhammer, which is one of their main priorities at the moment, since they have work to do on that contract. They've not finished it yet. They signed to do three Warhammer games, like I said, one's not released yet, and of course, all the DLCs and everything that needs to come with that. Because of of course, once a third Total War Warhammer game comes out, I expect that they're going to join that in with the Mortal Empires DLC and expansion. That's going to take a lot of effort as well, and all the separate DLCs after that. So they've got so much on their plate at the moment, and yes, they do have a historical and a fantasy department doing their own things, but who knows where they'll go after Warhammer. They might take into a new fantasy genre or maybe even continue in Warhammer because it's been so successful, it's earned them so much money, they've been such big games. Because of course from a business standpoint, which at the end of the day, CA is a big business, they need to make money to stay afloat. It makes way more financial sense for them to work on an already established brand such as Warhammer and brings even more players from these different areas into their game rather than starting something completely from afresh or just something that's a sort of in community of the Total War franchise like Medieval 3 would be. That would just mostly be Total War fans buying that game rather than a whole new brand merging into one. And maybe they're even thinking because of the success of Warhammer this could be done with other copyrighted materials. I'll let your minds run racing with what type of fantasy materials they could put in a Total War in the future. This medieval era is somewhat being hinted throughout their games, with Attila expansions like the Age of Charlemagne and Thrones of Britannia, but it's not really a full medieval, it's sort of a similar era. But could this mean that they're trying to get back into the medieval era, preparing for a medieval 3 to see if it's still a popular thing by just dipping their toes in with their other games? Or could it mean they're trying to get a workaround with putting excuses out there saying we don't need to make a full medieval 3 because we're putting a very similar time era with very similar troops and tactics in these other games. But then we have to remember there is the Total War Saga series, which focuses on smaller scale battles. And the only thing that worries me is instead of going into a full-fledged Medieval 3, they're going to use the excuse with the Saga series by taking a very tiny part of a Medieval 3 Total War game, but calling it a Medieval Sagas game. And that could be a workaround they might be looking at at the moment. But that's just my speculation and something that worries me that they're going to use the sagas as an excuse to get a medieval game out there. Since that's what they did with Thrones of Britannia, hinting at things like that. But it means that they won't have to do a full-fledged Medieval 3. Now, Medieval 2 has often been said to be one of the best Total Wars. And it was one of the OG Total Wars before things changed rather drastically for the series. So maybe it is possible there will be a Medieval 3 down the line. But the risk of messing it up is really big for CA, with the prowess behind that part of the series being massive. So if they ever do decide to make it, it will be very, very far in the future, and I don't think we can expect it in the next few years. I think it's more likely going to get Three Kingdoms and Total War Warhammer 3, and then maybe they're going to expand the Warhammer universe with more DLCs and maybe one more unknown Total War game, and then maybe there might be hints of Medieval 3 in the future. But I don't know how likely that is. But is it more like to get a Rome 3 Total War or a Medieval 3 Total War? Well, I think it's definitely more likely we're going to get a Medieval 3 than a Rome 3. Because of course the recentness of Rome 2 in perspective with everything in terms of Medieval 2 to Medieval 3, there'll be a much bigger gap. So that's more likely to happen. But is it definite? 100% not. But I guess only time will tell.